How much money could a London cab driver earn? Well, I can't actually give you the answer to that question. Not because I don't want to, I don't actually know how. In this video, I'm gonna share some reasons as to why we don't know exactly what a London cab driver can earn. I'll share some examples of hypothetically how much could a London cab driver earn, and categorically, there is an amount of money that a driver would not want to surpass, and we will find out that later on in the video. Let's get started. There is no one fixed number as to what a London cab driver earns. I've had people tell me that, Tom, you're a mug, the game's dead, you might as well become a bus driver or you know, a HGV driver because you're gonna earn way more money doing that. And similarly, there's people who comment at my videos and they say, oh, well, London taxi driver, you must be earning over 100K a year. A number kind of gets spouted out there and people just follow that and flock to that number like it's gospel. It's like if you asked anyone what a London tube driver earns. There's so many people out there who would say, oh, a London tube driver earns over 100 grand a year. And I found an article online about tube drivers that do earn around 100 grand. You dig a bit deeper and you find that in that article, only three people are earning between 80,000 and 99,000 pounds on the entire tube network. And of these, you know, it's very likely that some of those are instructors. So quite rightly so, they teach people how to drive trains, for Christ's sake. But what I'm saying here is that people see that one article and they assume that every single tube driver earns 100K a year, in the same way that someone makes a figure up of a London taxi driver and assume that we all must earn loads of money. I even asked ChatGPT because that's a clever bit of software. Surely if anyone's gonna know how much a London cab driver earns, it will know. What did it come back with? 30,000 pounds. It didn't tell me if that was turnover or profit, and I even asked for options as to how a London cab driver could earn even more money. But what is it? 30,000 pounds, 100,000 pounds? Surely there must be some kind of average as to what a cab driver earns. There's 18,000 London cab driver badges, but there's no way of giving you an average figure of what a London cab driver earns. I could give you my number, what I earn, but that's kind of pointless. It doesn't give you any scope of an average at all. It's a bit like the size of your manhood doesn't actually have any resemblance on the greater average of average manhoods if we just look at one particular example. Hopefully I have some influence on that scale. Just this number on its own means nothing. So there's clearly a bit of a range. One of the reasons why it's so difficult to get a defined number is that taxi driver circumstances vary so wildly. You know, take for instance, if I just did one extra job a day of say 12 pounds, well, five days a week, that's an extra 60 pound a week, or across 48 weeks of the year, it's an extra 3,000 pounds. You can imagine all these kind of variances from cab driver to cab driver is why it's so difficult to come up with an absolute number. Earnings may vary wildly, but there's something I love to be consistent with, and that is my nutrition. That's of course where Y Food steps in for this video. You'll have seen them on the channel before. Y Food are a complete meal replacement shake. They come in bottle, bars, and powder form, meaning that you can take them just about anywhere. Today, for instance, I've literally just got into town, but by the time I park up, find somewhere so I can go get something that is healthy or more optimum nutrition, I could have very easily just taken a Y Food. I love these because they're a perfect blend of carbohydrates and protein, so I know that I'm getting something healthy and tasty. And because they're made from long life milk, you can always keep one in the cab, meaning that you're covered in whatever circumstance you may find yourself. Favorites for me at the moment are the cold brew coffee flavor. There's over 100 milligrams of coffee in this one bottle alone, so you're not only getting full, but you're getting a nice energy boost as well. And the bars are awesome for an afternoon pick-me-up. Hazelnut and chocolate, salted caramel and chocolate. Best of all, Y Food are giving you guys a full 10% off your entire order. You can do that on any basket size as many times as you like. Just use my code taxi-youtube or the link in the description down below. Thanks again to Y Food and now let's find out a bit more about cabbie earnings. Before I get into specific examples, I just want to say that for me being a London cab driver is a fairly good living. It's not like the winning lottery ticket or a magic silver bullet that's gonna make all your problems go away. You still have to put the hours in and it is a job. You don't just get paid for just turning up. You do have to physically work the hours. I personally couldn't care who knows what I earn, but I won't share my specific earnings out of respect for other taxi drivers. And as we're about to learn, incomes can vary wildly. Let's look at a specific scenario. If we're gonna compare someone who's paid off their taxi, let's call them Dinosaur Dave, to someone who's still paying off their taxi, Butterboy Ben. For the sake of example, I could be Butterboy Ben because 
I'm still paying off my taxi. You can look at these costs in more detail in a video over here where I outline all my expenses as a London cab driver. And to make it super simple, I'm just gonna assume that Dinosaur Dave and Butter Boy Ben have exactly the same costs. The main difference is that Dinosaur Dave has paid off his cab, so he's only got to do insurance, overhaul, tax, all those sorts of things, whereas Butter Boy Ben has got to do all of those, plus the cost of paying off the cab. We're also gonna assume that Butter Boy Ben and Dinosaur Dave are both working five days a week. If your intention is to try and squeeze as much money out of driving a cab working seven days a week, then just go and find a job that will pay you more money to begin with. I did the Norwich of London for a better quality of life, not to work every hour under the sun. So just bear that in mind for this next point. And each of the days that Butter Boy Ben and Dinosaur Dave are out, they both take 200 pounds. Seems reasonable. I'm not gonna to allude to how many hours they might be out. You know, maybe in Kipper season, that might be more of a difficult number to get. Busier periods, maybe not so much. Let's keep their yearly cost super simple. Both of them aren't a member of a union. Both of them don't contribute to a pension. They literally just go out and earn hand to mouth. Broken down weekly and assuming that they work 48 weeks of the year, because of course they need four weeks off holiday a year, we can assume that Butterboy Ben's costs are 315 pounds a week, whereas Dinosaur Dave's is 43 pounds 70. In terms of juice, we're going to assume that their fuel cost is 25 pounds a day. Now on day one, Butterboy Ben has fixed cost of 340 pounds. He only takes 200 pounds, meaning that he's still 140 pounds down. He's done a whole day of work and he has nothing to show for it. Dinosaur Dave, on the other hand, his costs are only 68 pounds 70, meaning that, well, he's got himself nearly 130 quid profit right off the bat. How awesome is that? But how will it compare for the rest of the week? Well, by the end of day five, Butterboy Ben has cleared 560 pounds gross profit. Still got to pay tax on that, but of course, after his expenses, 560 pounds in his back pocket. Whereas Dinosaur Dave has earned 832 pounds. That's a difference of 272 pounds, and they both work exactly the same amount of hours. That's an extra 13 grand a year. That's mental to think. In fact, Dinosaur Dave could work four days a week compared with Butterboy Ben's five days a week, and he could still be nearly five grand better off a year, even though he's worked one day less. That's why it's so difficult to quantify taxi driver earnings. The newer driver might have loads of things to pay out for. Maybe he's got a family and social life that he wants to keep up with. So the maximum he can work is five days a week. The older driver might be a widower, might be able to go out seven days a week because he's got no other interests in life. Or maybe you get to that point in life and you think, well, you know what, I'm gonna slow down. I've had quite a long career. Maybe she only worked three days a week. Everyone's circumstances are entirely different, which is why it's so hard to quantify from one driver to the next. Lowering expenses is one way to earn more money in the cab. What about just working more hours? In the taxi, you can't just multiply the hours. It's kind of a bit like the Pareto principle. 80% of your effectiveness comes from 20% of your input. In that, you know, I come to work, I generally get in about two o'clock and I'll go home at 11 o'clock. But there's gonna be some hours that are more effective than others. Half four, five o'clock, work might start ramping up, just the way it goes. Then you have the half seven till half nine slack period. These are generally times when people are set in restaurants and they're not moving around London as much. Then you've got your 10 o'clock bursts. Everyone who comes out of the theatre or restaurants all at once. And of course, everyone needs cabs for the next hour, two hours or whatever. If I just came to work and said, right, I'm only gonna work in the rush hour time and I'm only gonna work when everyone comes out of the theatres. It doesn't quite work like that. You need to kind of go across the whole day. It's akin to finance, saving, stock investing that you can't ever time the market is having time in the market. You can never pick the days when the market's gonna go up, but the idea is, is that you're invested for the long haul and you get to ride some of those waves. And the same happens in the cab. If I come out and I've only got four hours to work, you can be pretty sure that those four hours are probably gonna be ineffective or I might be empty for two hours and I've only got two hours to find my money. But if I'm out for 12 hours, then across the course of that day, I'm more likely to do better. So it would be super nice to think, yep, that's my hourly rate. I earn this much an hour. If I come out for 12 hours, I will earn 12 times that because some hours are gonna be more profitable than others. So you can't quantify how much a cab driver can earn just by looking at, here's a day, here's how long it is because every day is wildly differently. Even from one cab driver to the next, if you speak to your friend and he's in one area of town, he might be doing better than you, but you can't get there or you might have no luck where you are. Just the way that it rolls. The other thing to consider is that you can only work as hard as the meter. The meter, it provides fair and consistent fares for paying passengers because it's set and regulated by Transport for London. Now I've done this previously where I've turned this meter on 
And if I just sat still for an hour, I mean, the last time I'd done it on the old fare was about £37.20. Let's say it goes to £40, that might be a little bit generous. But even if I had that meter constantly running and I sit here for nine hours, I somehow get a fair paying passenger and I sit here for nine hours, that is a maximum of £360. So that is an unimaginable scenario. The best way is mileage and consistent back-to-back -back jobs because we get a starting fare and then also this goes up a lot faster if we put miles on the clock. So we need to ideally find a way of getting from town to Heathrow Airport as quick as possible. Heathrow is probably one of the most profitable jobs. I probably do a Heathrow job off the street once every six weeks. It's quite rare. You know, generally most are pre-booked and you know, a lot of hotels have their own cars to take people to and from the airport. Maybe if you're more of a morning person, you'll get jobs from the hotel. From the West End or whatever, it's probably about 85 quid, including the drop-off, to go from central London out to Heathrow Airport. Generally factoring about an hour's worth of traffic. And then of course, you've got to get back into town. It might be by the time you dropped off, done bits and pieces, might be another 40 minutes before you get back into town. So you're talking almost two hours to earn that 85 quid. And even people who do Heathrow jobs for a living, because they negotiate a fixed rate, they'll do it for a bit cheaper because then there's an incentive than just hailing a cab off the street. Also, not all the Heathrow jobs are gonna be perfectly stacked and sequential in that way. You might have a few hours gap in between. You can't always have a job on that seat as much as you would like to. Even if I do an 85 pound job out to Heathrow Airport, and then I say, right, I wanna go join the Heathrow Airport rank to get one coming back in. It's generally a minimum of two hours, even up to four hours to wait for that job to get back in. You know, you've got a factory in travel time on top of those two hours, plus getting to the terminal. So you might be talking three hours in. So, you know, you're more like that 80 pound is then being split across three hours. Original Heathrow job out there waiting, getting back in. You might be around 160 pounds and it's been about four hours of your day to do it. 320, 350 pound all in. And that's if you do have the luck of Heathrow Airport out and then sitting at the rank, getting through it in a reasonably quick time and ensuring you get one back into town. You don't always get one back in, you might get one further out, which is not what you wanna be playing at. You can't guarantee or engineer your luck in the cab. You're always gonna have dead times in between. You can't just have profitable jobs. You're gonna have short jobs. You're gonna get stuck in a bit of traffic, meaning you can't get to another job. It's all linked to this thing. Whole time we've been recording this, we just sat at £9.20. So if we're limited by the meter in our taxis, what can we do about it? Well, don't use it. To preface this, if you hire a taxi from the street, the meter must be used. The meter is there to protect passengers. Tour guiding. Cheeky little plug for myself, but I am a qualified tour guide here within London and specifically the London Borough of Camden. What does this mean? Well, I can charge a premium for the fact that I'm educated on a specific topic here in London. And if I get more and more guiding badges, that gives me more specific knowledge. If it's more specific, it's more niche, I can charge a higher premium for it. How much can a London cab driver charge for these kind of tours? Well, within reason, just about whatever they want. So as a specific example, I could charge 250 pounds for a four hour tour. If my scheduling is correct and I manage to get good pickup locations, I can get two of those in a day, five times a week. I'll let you do the maths there. Yes, I might need to market myself a bit. Yes, I might need some extra guiding qualifications or some more unique selling points that I might not have necessarily as a cab driver, but it does give you a good idea of what a London cab driver could earn. And finally, there is one thing that is stopping a London taxi driver earning over a certain amount. It's three letters, V-A-T, value added tax. As most London taxi drivers are self-employed, they are business owners. And if you're a business owner and you pass over the 85,000 pound threshold, you are liable for value added tax. Now I hear you saying, but Tom, tax is only a portion of what you earn. If you earn so much, you can surely afford to set aside a small portion of tax. That's correct when it comes to income tax. And in the self-employed analogy, income tax comes after you've taken your expenses out. So if you turn over 50,000 pounds, you have 20,000 pounds of expenses, there's 30,000 pounds left over to be taxed. 10,000 pounds of it is not taxable because it's a 10,000 pounds to start. 20,000 pounds that you're taxed at 20%, that's four grand of tax. Easy. VAT is slightly different because it's based upon your turnover. So the VAT threshold is 85,000 pounds. If you earn over that, you are liable to pay VAT. Let's just say that you earn 85,001 pounds. So you've got one pound into the VAT threshold. 
and your expenses are exactly £75,001. That means you've got £10,000 worth of profit. And because it's only £10,000, you don't have to pay income tax on that. Fine. But you are liable for VAT. And VAT on that £85,000 amount, 20% is £17,000. As a result, you're minus £7,000 for the year. Now, of course, London cab drivers don't have that many expenses, but the fact that VAT is based upon your turnover can be a huge amount out of your cash flow. It's why, if you look at it online, there's many businesses that kind of hover near that VAT threshold. They don't want to cross it because there's a certain amount you have to cross over by for it to be profitable, for it to be worthwhile. Say you stayed under the £85,000 threshold by £1 and you have £15,000 worth of expenses. That's £70,000 after expenses. Once you pay your basic income tax rate, your higher rate tax, you have around £54,000 net. But with those same expenses, but into the VAT threshold, you still pay your basic rate of income tax and your higher rate, but you've then got that 17 grand VAT bill on top. What was £54,000 net is now £37,000 net. Big difference, just because you earn a couple of quid more. I believe in transportation, you can register for a flat rate scheme, which is about 10%. But still, 10% of your entire turnover is still a big chunk of money to find. You might add another point here. Tom, it can't be that bad. I mean, there's a painter and decorator down the road from me. He's VAT registered. Or there's a builder who's VAT registered. They can do it. Why can't a taxi driver do it? A builder or a decorator can add VAT to their invoices. So if they charge £200 for a day rate, they can add VAT on top of it. And this is kind of an accepted practice. Customers know that. It also gives some sort of scope as to how big their business is. The issue with a London taxi is that you cannot charge more than the metered amount because we're a set standardised fare. Could you imagine if you got in one cab and because that driver was over the £85,000 threshold, he then says, sorry mate, I'm gonna to have to charge you an extra 20% because I'm over VAT, but then another driver isn't. It's not that same standardised fare that's set by TfL. So as a result, the driver can't claim back VAT through their everyday fares. Meaning that they've got to swallow that VAT bill entirely out of their own back pocket. They can't charge that or pass that on to the customer. That is why a working London taxi driver will not want to earn over £85,000. Unless there's some other business interests that they can funnel it through or have VAT elsewhere, as a working taxi driver, you can't do it. As we've seen, it's gonna make a massive impact on how much is actually kept in your back pocket. And that gives you some insight into how much a London cab driver could earn. I really think you might enjoy my previous video, how do cabbies bump up the meter? The answer is not as obvious as you might think. Thank you once again, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.